Wow, great win and everything, but I feel kinda bad. I don't. Not even a little. Never. Why not? You should never feel bad after a win. Don't you remember the first nine seasons of these videos? S Steven, are you there? Oh boy, he's in his bad place. Hi! Victory puppy! I have no idea what I'm doing. God, you're there, it's just a lead! Steven's ruining my life! Oh! Here's one for Michael Hutchinson Shutta. Here's one for Trevor Moore's first NHL goal. Oh, Ganoff score. This was a weird game, huh? Leafs win! Five to nothing over the Vancouver Canucks. That's a bit more like it, friends. Vancouver Canucks fans, if I were you, why don't we get this out of the way early? Dude, burn it. Burn the whole game. Don't be too hard on any of the players individually, even Pouliot for that Moore goal. Dude, these games happen. The Canucks have played a lot of games in not a lot of nights. I believe that was mentioned at least once or twice. And they're missing their best player. Now, some of you might go, well, Steve, the Leafs won a bunch of games without Austin Matthews. Well, the Leafs are in a bit of a different spot, wouldn't you say? The Leafs are second place in the NHL right now, and they came into the season expecting to be at least a top 10 team. The way the Canucks came into the season, it looked like they were going to compete for Quinn's brother Jack Hughes. And now they're in contention for a playoff spot. They lose Elias Petrosin, who is the runaway favorite for the Calder, and they're just not as deep. Markstrom's been great recently. He had a bad game. They've been shut out in three out of the last four games. Yeah, that's pretty concerning. But if anyone's going to ream out this team after a performance like that, and it wasn't a good one, let it be Travis Green. Let it be the coaching staff. I don't think they need it from the fan base right now, and I also don't think the fan base is going to give it to them because they're smart enough. Remember the Leafs a few years ago? This season for the Canucks feels a little bit. It's similar. They're playing with found money, house money. The young players who are going to be the backbone of the team going forward have played good. They may or may not make the playoffs, but whether or not they do, they've made it interesting. And for the first time in a few years, the Canucks are wholly relevant. If the Canucks narrowly miss the playoffs, they still might get a little bit of that hockey god karma. And can you imagine if they have a great season, narrowly miss out, and end up winning one of the draft lotteries and get a Capo Caco or unite the Hughes brothers? Look, they haven't looked good, but they're about to play just one game in seven days. And even though it's only January 6th, every Canucks game for the rest of the month is going to be in Vancouver. Optimism. That's what I would feel if I were you. Now that we're done with that, wow! Yo, the Leafs killed them! Oh my god, they weren't even in that for a second! They didn't have Pedersen in the lineup, man, whatever! Sheesh, what did the Canucks ever do to you? Burroughs doesn't play for them anymore! My goodness, let's talk about the game. Hockey night in Canada, an all-Canadian matchup, the Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the Vancouver Canucks. Michael Hutchinson starting in this one, Kashmir Katsky swole back him up once again. This time, Hutchinson at least had the Leafs mask, but with those pads, he still looked like the Leafs were playing a hastily put together game of EASHL and NHL 19. Dude, I've never played goalie before, what do I do? It doesn't matter. Why are my pads red? Doesn't matter, it's funny. Alright, whatever, let's just play. Oh, I'm catching right? Man, start over. Can I exit? Can I? Oh. And heading into this game, I know it's a cap savings thing, but holy smokes, I get it. They've called up Moore and Kasky Swole. I didn't even know they were sent down, but thank you. My assumption was not that Martin Marinson was playing on the fourth line, and Justin Hall was in net. Although, after what I saw in this game, they still might have won. First period, Morgan Riley with the puck in his own end, and he's doing this slow, creeping, lion in the tall grass walk out of the zone. Sends it up the ice, it's tipped into the Canucks zone, and that is where the puck stayed for a very long time. Mitch Marner has his own chance, it doesn't go in, but the puck is kept in yet again. Morgan Riley, who is a Leaf, puts it on. John Tavares, who is a Leaf and an All-Star, tips it in. Morgan Riley like, oh. And the Leafs are up 1-0 early. That is Tavares' his 27th of the season. So at the official halfway mark of the season, game 41, Tavares is on pace for 54 goals. Listen, the Leafs are not without blemishes. But when they lost JVR, I was like, all right, goals might be a little harder to come by, but hopefully they'll be a little better at both ends of the ice, like defensively. Dude, Tavares has been a better goal scorer, and he's helped improve the team defensively. Morgan Riley changing his name to literally James Norris also helps. I want to throw this out there as a question of the game, which I really need to start doing more often. Which is the more outrageous snub? We sort of talked about this on the podcast. Mitch Marner for All-Star or Morgan Riley for All-Star? It's a ludicrous question. I know Marner's been ridiculous top 10 scorer in the league. He should be in there. But the fact that Morgan Riley leads all all defenders in scoring and he's not in is nuts. So my vote is for Riley, but the correct answer is both should be going. The correctest answer I thought came from Elliot Friedman during the broadcast of the Next Generation game. Dude, who cares what position they play? No one plays defense at the All-Star game. Vote for whoever you want. Dude, for the quality of competition at these things, have a couple goalies play out. I don't care. Entertain me! That's all I want. A few minutes later, Igor Ozhiganov gives the puck to Trevor Moore and rocket skates. And by 
rocket skates. I mean, I, he turned on the jets, but holy smokes, Derek Pouliot, that's terrible. Absolutely burns Pouliot, completely turnstiles him, walks in on Markstrom. He's got Lindholm, but nah. -uh. More snipes, puts it in the back of the net. Now one of his teammates has to get it. His first career NHL goal. Man, this is my 12th season doing LFR. I would love to know how many first career NHL goals I've gotten to say in these videos. Speaking of which, get this from Sportsnet Stats. Always great. Trevor Moore is the 650th different player in Leafs history to score a goal. Man, and a great story too. He was a walk-on at Leafs camp, earned himself a contract, went to the AHL, and earned his way the hard way. Because like a lot of young Marley's rookies, he started at the bottom of the lineup, but he wasn't a big name like a Kapanen or a Nylander or other guys who have come through the organization. And he spent a lot of nights barely playing or not playing at all. Started kind of slow last season, but turned on the Jets. And by the end of the playoffs, he was the Marley's best forward. This season began, still the Marley's best forward. When Tyler Ennis first broke his ankle, I saw people going, well, should the Leafs call up this guy or that guy or that guy? As Mike Babcock often says, Ty goes to the veteran and Moore is the oldest. He's 23 going on 24. Let the younger guys develop a bit more. Certainly didn't hurt more. And never minding the strategy part of it, Moore's just better right now at this very moment. Now, I don't know if Ennis is coming back anytime soon, but there's also Zach Hyman. And if he keeps this up, he's going to make Mike Babcock's decision very difficult. Because in theory, he could keep him in the lineup and take Goche out. But the problem? Waivers. Why is it always waivers? But that's not even touching the Leafs goalie situation, which is another can of worms. Methinks Mr. Dubas has a decent phone plan. No scoring in the second, so we'll skip to the third. Less than five minutes into the third, Andreas Janssen gives it to Austin Matthews. And then the Canucks defense is just in panic mode because Matthews could come short side he can go around Canucks defender makes the wrong choice his defense partner isn't even looking because he's concerned with Willie Nylander crashing the net Matthews goes for the wraparound which is an underrated weapon in his little repertoire and it sneaks through Jakob Markstrom and in three nothing Leafs man that goal was like the second goal in that yeah they were nice I guess and yeah Markstrom should probably stop them but oof the defense! And let me just say, Matthews, by the way, getting his 20th goal of the season, that was excellent. William Nylander, that might have been his best game since coming back. Dancing, confident, that goal went straight to his legs, it looked like. And Matthews looked great, too, after maybe wanted to have a bounce-back game after the Minnesota Wild giveaway. Dude, putting Willie with Austin is awesome. Willie makes Austin more dangerous. I've seen people be like, oh, Willie's only good because he has Austin as his center. Well, yeah, having Austin as your center is nice. But when Willie's dancing, and in this game he was dancing, he requires a little bit of attention or he's gonna burn you. And every morsel of attention you take away from Austin Matthews is a chance for him to burn you. And a few minutes later, Andreas Janssen, who is so polite that he let people spell his name wrong for several years, is like, guys, I'm here too. Matthews goes in the puck, he's behind the net, he comes out in front, snipes over the shoulder of Markstrom. Yikes. That is a goal scorer's snipe. And it was exactly like the William Nylander goal against the Wild, except he's left-handed. His ninth goal of the season on this one, he got his tenth assist previously, he's up to 19 points. Don't make me create a Janssen jar. Don't you talk about his contract. Gonna make you fill that jar with S-E-K, whatever that stands for. Swedish excellent currency. And then a little under three minutes later, Igor Ozhiganov in the corner in the offensive zone on the... Okay. All right, now I feel bad. Igor Ozhiganov just throws the puck in front. The puck goes off of guy who some people wanted instead of Igor Ozhiganov and in. And it's five nothing. I feel bad. And by the way, the entire time, Michael Hutchison just kind of having a good time wearing his jersey and his mask and his red pads. I hate it. Honestly, barely ever really looked tested. Good at absorbing the puck and catching the puck and directing it into the corner when he had to. Leafs didn't have a single power play in this one, so we're back to that, are we? But the Canucks, meanwhile, had three power plays and Hutch helped kill them all. Six shorthanded shots against. Weird little thing there, because Connor Brown and Mitch Marner are both on the same line, and that's basically the top line now, and they were killing penalties together, they both played over 19 minutes. The next highest Leaf forward was Kasperi Kapanen at 16 1605. John Tavares, who was the top centerman in ice time, by the way, was 1604. No one else was above 16. Talk about spreading the love. And by the way, two of those penalties were Jake Gardner for tripping accidentally. The second one was Hutchinson tripped him, and then he accidentally tripped someone else. Here's how little of a threat the Canucks were in this game. Gardner laughed both times. Yeah, it didn't go good for them. But don't let that take away from the fact that Hutchinson got a shutout. It's special. Questions? Not really a question, more of a conversation. Mark UK Leaf, Chris Mueller. 
good pro. In the heart of Vlad saying, a real good player and a hell of a man. But seriously, can Chris Mueller get some love for hitting 500 career AHL points? Only 95 people have done that in the league's history. It's funny, scoring that many points in the AHL is weird for a few reasons. Because one, you gotta be good enough to do it. But usually the problem when you're good in the AHL is you get called up. And I guess Mueller just hasn't really gotten that opportunity very often. But you need guys like him in the organization. Signed to an NHL contract, by the way, so in theory he could be called up. But he helps develop players and looking at the Marley success recently, he's doing a good job. So yes, a very unsung guy in the Leafs organization, usually when it comes to a team's minor league system, if they're not a prospect, really no one talks about it. But you need your Chris Mueller's good on him. How clutch was Hutch? The real question is how many times are we all going to say the same thing? And the answer is many. I like how it sounds. Here, instead of that, do you think the Finland gold medal win is equivalent to the Eberly win for Canada? Congrats, Finland. No, I don't think it's on par with that. I don't even think it's on par with Kapanen's OT winner for them to win the gold medal a few years ago. But every win is a big win and to Finland I would say this. I think I've already talked about this. Ellie Tolvanen was talking about, oh, you know, Finland, no one expected us to win. Yes, we did. Finland's not that country anymore. They're a powerhouse in the hockey world. Anytime Finland goes into a hockey game against Canada, USA, Russia, Sweden, they got a shot. Finland's not winning this thing because they're lucky. They're winning it because they're good. So whatever congratulations is in Finnish, that. Was that Trevor Moore's best game? Not even including the goal. I feel he played amazing and seemed like he was everywhere at once. Did Mitch give him some of his Mountain Dew? Um, I don't even know if that was Moore's best game. It, it just looked like how he's been playing. Very well. This maybe showed his speed the most. I, I think he's actually looked more dangerous in other games. Guy's a full-time NHL player, man. It's good to have too many of those. Ah, here it is. Should Hutchinson replace Sparks as the backup goalie for the Leafs? Well, the simple answer is when Mike Babcock's made up his mind he's made up his mind and it sounds like he's made up his mind we'll see if he does replace sparks as the backup goalie uh, first of all good on him congratulations he gets to live out a childhood dream but it's a shame that like sparks wasn't given a shot guys he just wasn't nine games isn't a shot and it's not like a decision was made recently i'm sure it was even before the ninth game but i tell you what even though hutchinson has looked good and wow he gets a shout out in his second leaf game sparks got a shout out in his first one look at hutchinson's career coming into this game though there's evidence that there might be something there, but largely, eh. Reminds me of Sparks. Reminds me of McElhaney. It's often said the goalies are voodoo, and I know they're not voodoo. They're highly trained athletes put under immense pressure who have this art form slash science that they call goaltending. But at the same time, goalies, especially backup goalies, are a little bit voodoo. So who should be the backup? At this point, I don't care if it's Carlton the Bear. Just stop the puck. Has it been long enough to start to worry about Nylander? No. You know what it's been long enough? That we don't need to ask this question anymore. It's been long enough that Nylander Nylander has played good hockey that we don't need to worry about his goal scoring in my opinion. Who watched Nylander play this game and went, uh oh I'll tell you who, the Canucks because he was great. And by the way, this is unrelated to Nylander. Shout out the Kadri, Kapanen, and Marlowe line way better than they were against the Wild. After I think it was two shots combined, Marlowe gets two shots, Kadri gets three, Kapanen five that's ten. From Eric Smith hello Sportsnet's Raptor reporter Eric Smith which Leaf could suit up for the Raptors? Which Raptor could suit up for for the Leafs. Do we need crossover commercials like back in the day with Alvin Williams, Reggie Slater, and Doug Christie? I love the Nazem Kadri, Jonas Valanciunas commercial where they get together and just have an uber night. You know, like bros. But they're watching sports together at night in the winter. And I'm like, one of you plays for the Leafs, the other plays for the Raptors. What are you watching? And yeah, it's Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. I'm surprised they don't do more stuff like this considering they have TFC, the Leafs, the Marlies, the Raptors, Raptors 905. Crossovers are all the rave right now. They gotta do it. As for who could do what, let's just get something out of the way right away. Skating's weird. It screws up the whole conversation, so just ignore it. Any Leaf could get on the basketball court right now and dribble the ball up the court. It would take a lot of practice for the Raptors to do some things on skates that the Leafs can do. So ignoring that so that we can have some fun, Kyle Lowry would be a great player because he crashed the slot, doesn't give up on a play, he's tenacious. OG Ananobi really good at pretending like he didn't just take a penalty. And just put Kawhi Leonard in net just so I could see how big his glove and blocker would be. For which Leaf could be a Raptor, I'm gonna say Freddie Gauthier because he's the tallest and I wanna see what it would look like for him to put the basketball in his mouth and drop it through the hoop with his teeth. It's just a ridiculous visual that I'm gonna think about all day. And I'm gonna say Mitch Marner because I have so much fun watching him play hockey. I wanna see him play all kinds of sports. I never know what he's gonna do next and basketball is a sport that requires a lot of creativity. So I'm gonna say him. So thanks for the question, former RBC Junior Hockey Magazine writer Eric Smith.
I'm gonna say that is it for this one. I'm finishing shooting this at just after 1.30 in the morning. So I'm gonna edit this, the video is gonna go up super duper late, and then I'm gonna spend all of the rest of the day, once I finally wake up, doing the final edit of the book. And then I'm gonna submit it and that's it. That's the book. That's the book done. It's got to go to print and whatever's in the book is in it and whatever isn't, isn't. And I'm terrified. So tomorrow should be fun. Did I say tomorrow? I meant today. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like. If you like this video, click subscribe. If you really liked it, tell all your friends. Hey, to donate to the Marner Jar, I forgot. TheMarnerJar.com. Let's go to over $5,000. Hey, all the proceeds go to Sick Kids Hospital because they do good work and if you donate, you'll be doing good work and that makes you a good player. How's that?